Hello, my name is Paul, and welcome to my devlog for the Corky Christmas Game Jam. The date is the 17th of December 2016, and the project's working title is Dr. Corky Lee Shepherd. The game is a top-down stealth game where you destroy as much of the office furniture as possible whilst not getting caught by the guards or staff. A quick overview of what I'm going to be talking about. <clears throat> I'm first going to go over my thoughts and feelings at the moment. I'm going to cover everything that I currently have in the engine and I'm going to cover any future work that I'm going to be doing over the course of today. So to start off with, this is my first game jam. I have developed games before as part of my game design course. I've been on my game design course for three years, currently on my masters for it at the moment. Nothing published because the uni owns the rights to those games, so unfortunately, even if I wanted to, the uni currently owns everything that was produced for the game. So, what I aim to do with this game jam is increase my presence and portfolio. Because, as all well good as it is having uni work, I don't necessarily own it own any of it anymore as I just mentioned and I want content of my own that I can say this is my own copyright and this is what I have produced and released out there. I'm not necessarily expecting to win as any person would normally say in this scenario if I manage to place high up you know that's an achievement in itself but, that said, I hope that this game does do well. I'm hoping it doesn't flop miserably, and I just cry myself to sleep at night. <laughs> anyway. So, currently, in the engine, everything is... Well, the sprites are currently proxy. Um, the collision stuff is purely there to just represent the um, different collision types that I have. Uh, they won't be visible in the end game, but they are currently visible for the purpose of uh, demonstrating the map layout. Well, we're just demonstrating that all the collision types work. Uh, the player is composed of two sprites. One is the skin and one is the collision box. <clears throat> The collision box is actually a uh, 12 by 12. Uh, the reason for it is so that you won't get like jammed yourself. You won't jam yourself inside a really, really narrow hallway. Though in this scenario, it won't necessarily happen. I'm just doing it this way to avoid any possible risks by colliding into, or just by like getting stuck anywhere. And then the player skin is just 16 by 16. Standard, really. Uh, UI. I only have a just a big red button for the quit at the moment. Um, the reason I have that is because I don't necessarily want to constantly be pressing Alt F4 to just constantly quit out. So I've put that in there for now. When I come along to actually making a proper UI, I this will probably just be tucked away in that and then will be out of sight unless you actually open the UI menu. Uh, enemies, same concept. They just use the collision box from the player. Um, there's two here at the moment. I've only using one because I only have one AI type set up currently. Uh, today I'm going to be working on actually distinguishing between the two, so that'll be all done and dusted by the time I do the next dev log. And game objects. Uh, we have a sector mark and a wreckable object. Um, sector marks are the waypoints for the enemy AI to get them to wander around, and they go to specific points, and they randomly pick which point to go to at any given point. The wreckable is one of the two um, objectives of the game. Mm. <clears throat> I say one of two because. 
There is another objective that I am intending to have in, but I'll explain that later on in the video. And then just a cursor scan, just because I wanted the game to actually detect when I started the mouse over the Wreckables objects, and a little bit difficult to do. I was having a bit of trouble with it, so I just created a object for the cursor to scan with. Script. There's quite a few here. Uh, first of all, check collision scripts. Um, this is a standard one that a lot of people use in Game Maker um, to detect collisions with. There's some slight variances to it, just because I was mostly following a tutorial. Um, credits to Lewis Clark on YouTube for that. Um, he has a series of top down still tutorials which I've use um, quite a bit of stuff from that to help build out a lot of the more difficult chunks of the game. Um, but this is um, a standard across, this is a standard collision system across um, a lot of games, including platformers and other stuff that requires precise collisions. Uh, the, enemies, the script for the enemy seeing the player this is um, handled in a vision cone. Um, Lewis would probably explain it a lot better than I do, but basically the cone is being projected from the um, skin's angle, so if the player is in line of sight of that cone generated by the angles from the skin, then they will immediately focus on the player. Um, <clears throat> the return true and the return false are to basically have them alerted to the player's presence. This has, hasn't come into play just yet because I'm still currently um, working out the conditions for them to actually be alarmed by you, but once this is all set up properly then they will actually, they'll actually be a I'm debating between the potential game over immediately or just simply um, depending on whether or not they actually catch up to the player. So I'm not sure yet. I'm still debating on it. So we'll have to wait and see what I decide to do with it. Enemy hearing something. This is handled by sounds. I should say, well, sounds, quote unquote. Um, because currently the sounds are basically just a radius where whenever a sound happens, if the radius overlaps with the enemy, then it counts as them hearing something. So it just finds all instances of the sound source object, gives a total number and starts looping through them, um, finds an instance, determines whether or not they're actually close enough to hear the sound and then they will start going towards it to investigate. Again, return true and return false are there for reasons. Investigate. <coughs> this is done on a um, pathfinding system that I've used from the tutorials. Um, I'll explain a bit more about it once I go into the uh, the roaming code, but Basically, it takes the grid, um, set. It basically takes the grid and sets a path to um, the investigation X and Y from the um, hearing script, and then starts moving towards that. The disabling the alarm is so that they don't um, start just roaming around again mid investigation. The returns, the return script. Again, this is part of the pathfinding where the return X and the return Y are set in the enemy object, set when they immediately spawn in, and again, alarm to stop them from just immediately running around. This, I'll explain why it exists in a moment, and the roaming script. So this is where a lot of the um, generation for pathfinding happens. 
because this is the first script that will happen in the game once the enemies are spawned in. So you have a grid which is called from the uh, controller object. Um, it checks to see how many instances of the sector markers exist, totals them up. This is similar to the um, hearing code. Um, and then it stores them all under their own variable. This I got from an inventory um, tutorial by Sean Spalding, I believe. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head and I can't. Um, so this I just got from an inventory tutorial where it just sets each um, sector mark that it counts up and then I can refer back to it. Um, this adds the collision blocks to the um, instances. This is so that the enemy doesn't try and walk through them. <clears throat> so then that basically gives them the path that they need to follow and track. Then I have a temporary variable for <clears throat> A random range of numbers between 0 and minus 1 of the total sectors. Since the variable for the sector starts at 0 and it stops once it goes once it's like once it goes actual to the total number of sectors in the room, I need to make sure it's minus 1 so that it doesn't go 1 over and then suddenly causes crashes because it's trying to find a sector that doesn't exist. It then sets the target sector to the sector that's randomly chosen and if that if the current sector they're in is not the target sector then they can safely set the sector they're going to as that sector and then get the X and Y of it and set a path and go along that path. Roaming equals true is to stop the script from constantly looping and never actually setting the alarm to go back. And here's where enemy return comes into play because if it picks the current sector that's already on, then it has to have somewhere to return to. And I don't know what would necessarily happen if it picked the exact same sector and tried to make a path to it when it was already there, but I'm doing this to avoid the risk of it actually going to a point where it shouldn't be going to. And again, roaming equals true. Just avoids actually trying to um, loop the script over and over again. Gameplay, create sounds. This is one of the, uh, well, this is the only um, script in the moment that uses arguments. This is what creates the um, sounds whenever something happens such as stepping or destroying one of the objects. You got loudness, duration, the X position and the Y position. Loudness determines the radius of it. Uh, duration is well obviously how long the sound will remain in the room until it destroys itself and then X and Y position where it's spawned in. So, next up, player, keyboard controls. Uh, these, I'm debating on offering alternate control schemes because while it's up to WASD, um, I'm considering possibly making a uh, mobile or tablet version for the purposes of testing it while I'm not necessarily um well well while I'm out and about basically because I don't necessarily want to be constantly logging a laptop everywhere and I need to be able to test this somehow so the speed up and speed down is um a more for convenience really because players will probably want to move a little bit faster or actually move slower around certain areas um, so yeah, basic movements, um, it just adds to the, um, it just adds the move speed to the V-speed whenever you 
hold one of the keys down, and if you hold the two keys at once, then you stop. Um, this hidden equals true, I'm currently debating, because while yet yeah, aren't helpful that um, well, it's helpful that you can hide and move slower to avoid making too much noise. The problem is that at the moment it happens by default. So what I'm debating is actually having it um, activate whenever you uh, press a key to actually hide. I'm debating on it at the moment. Um, whether or not I actually putting in, put into place is another thing entirely, but either this code will get removed or I'll actually implement a a hide button or a sneak button so that you can actually move slower without the risk of alerting anyone else. Limit speed, this is just because obviously since it's adding the move speed to the uh, vertical and horizontal speed I need to make sure that it doesn't start going over that speed. Uh, speed up and speed down, this just increases the max speed that you can move at and these do have a maximum and minimum since here if it starts going over the speed limit and the crawl limit it will just set it to those limits. That's all the keyboard controls. Check hidden. Um, this is just checking whether or not the player is in a hiding place and uh, this um, alters their visibility. I believe I have that sorted in the objects. Obviously I can check in a moment whilst I'm going through all this but visibility starts at, starts at 2 and then for the different hiding areas it deducts it by how much cover it's actually providing you with. Otherwise just set it to the default visibility if you're not actually hidden. Make sounds. This is to have the player actually make sounds whilst they're stepping around. Um, I have altered the code that was in Lewis's tutorial because um, 60 was alright but the problem was it didn't quite feel like it was actual footsteps because the um, the amount of steps you seem to be taking were a lot more um, infrequent than what it should have been. So I've tested this with 45 and it seems to work a lot better. Um, obviously I've had to reduce the max speed because otherwise if you go up to the max speed that was in the tutorial you end up just basically moving ridiculously fast and yeah you're a corgi but I even think a corgi, like trying to pretend to be a human, shouldn't be running that fast. <laughs> so that's why I've set to 45. Um, and again, the create sound is here, and that basically multiplies the um, max speed by 20, so that it actually gives um, a wider range for the sound radius. Um, yeah, that's the that's what handles the player making sounds whenever they step. Uh, player wreck. This is just basically to um, give a timer for how long it takes to actually destroy an object when you're trying to wreck it. And UI initialize. This is just to put the button down and have it on screen. That this code will change as I start configuring the. UI more, but at the moment it's very basic. Collisions, uh, the standard block, uh, hiding, doesn't really interesting here, it's just standard. Uh, skin, all this does is just follows the player and just sets the image angle to um, point in the direction that your mouse is. Uh, the more interesting stuff is in the player object. So these are all the variables that I need to actually um, perform a lot of the functions. Camera is um, <clears throat> just simply something that the 
view is altered with skin again that's to give the player some actual um give them something other than just you know the bland collision box move speed max speed um move speed obviously you um in the keyboard controls it was adding the, those to the v speed and the h speed max speed is something to limit this speed with uh sneak divider that's just what it um divides the um final max speed of the max speed width to um give to the max speed final which is uh this divided by this and the crawl speed the crawl limit speed limit crawl limit i set because while you could set it as a flat number i prefer to set it as a variable just so if i need to um alter it anywhere and it's in like multiple points that I need to refer back to I can just refer back to this one variable and it's all sorted for me and speed limit this just prevents you just going insanely fast and possibly spilling your beverage <laughs> um, hidden this is just checking whether or not oh this again really into the stealth again could possibly change I'm not sure yet reach just determines how far away you, you are from a uh, wreckable object and it's to limit you from just clicking all the way across the other end of the map to break an object. Um, I still need to fill with this, I don't quite know if it's what I want to use for it yet. I'm going to check the range on it, um, probably today actually, see if it's accurate enough. If it's a bit too far out then I'm most likely going to lower this down. Noise level, this was a temporary variable. I could probably just get rid of this actually. I don't need it. Uh, it that was there because um, initially the noise was tied to the player, but since it's tied to another object entirely, I don't need it. Visibility, this is just determining, determining um, how visible you currently are to everything else. Default visibility is something that it can call back to when it's out in the open. Uh, stepping, this is for generating the noise and that's all the current variables in the create event. Alarm zero, this is just turning the stepping off when you're not actually moving. Well, when it, the alarm is done I should say. Not necessarily when you're not moving because that's in here. Uh, that calls the um, player controls, so that's the script for that. Checks collision, um, makes some noise when you move. It, there's quite a lot here, but I need to basically cover every possible. Um, uh, I need to cover everything that um, at every uh, speed that it could possibly go at. So I need to make sure that it's going in the negatives, and it'll make a sound if you are in, in fact moving. Check hidden, this is just checking whether or not you are in a hiding space. And that's all for the object player. Object player camera. Uh, this is just basically altering the um, X view and Y view to follow the mouse and keep the player in view with that. Uh, UI, the button quit. Uh, during the end step it just keeps it in view. Um, I've set to this currently. Um, this seems to work fine. It gives a small a small couple of pixels um, distance away from um, the actual edge of the screen but to be honest that's not too noticeable and I think it works perfectly fine in that regard so I'm not necessarily going to change it right now because again UI is still in a work in progress. Um, the Y obviously setting it to the top of the screen. I've done Y view and Y port. I probably don't need to add the Y port to the Y view. I could probably just leave it as Y view but until I test it I'm gonna leave it in. And when you left click on it, game end. Simple as. Master UI. This is um, ha this is currently handling the um, 
the total amount of wrecked objects and the um, currently wrecked objects at the moment. Script initialize just to spawn the equip button. That'll be a lot bigger of a script later on, as I mentioned. End step. Um, yeah, it just um, changes the total wreckables amount to the instance number. It's in the end step for now. Um, I don't know whether I'll change this or not yet, because I need to make sure that it doesn't just go back to zero at any point. Possibly room start could be a better option. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, draw in text. This is simply to um, is it is a temporary thing to tell me how many of the objects I've currently wrecked. I'm hoping this actually works because I've set it. I've um, set the objects to turn to true when their health is out, but I haven't quite tested that yet. So here's hoping. Uh, cursor scan. At the end, uh, just moves it towards the mouse X and the mouse Y, so that's perfectly fine. Enemies, object guard. Um, if this is uh, a measure to avoid, um, in case I completely forget to put a guard controller in the map, I this will add in the guard control for me. Just a countermeasure in case I'm really really stupid. Um, Path, path add, this is um, just to generate a path for each of the instances to follow. Skin, this just creates a skin once it's spawned in and it sets the parent to the um, ID of this object because otherwise it'll all try to follow one object and I, it just won't work properly. Detection radius, this is determining what they can hear and what they can see. So I can left and so I can right that feeds back into the um, the uh, site cone um, code. Investigate X and Y set to zero. They're not investigating anything. Turn X and turn Y just sets their original positions to those so they can return back to it. State variables. Suspicious is not in use yet. I'm intending to get that sorted today so that because again I need to sort out everything relating to the objectives and getting the wreckable objects sorted first and then um, and then once that's all in place I can start adding in the um, state for suspicious. Move speed, um, this is just a default one that I've got for now. I'm going to be expanding upon this most likely for NPCs chasing you so they'll start moving a bit faster so they can try and catch up. Current sector and target sector, just set them to minus one because obviously if I set them to zero they will just try and go to the um, first sector on the list. And the alarm is just a it's just set to 180 when it's created just to get them moving because I want them to start moving once the game starts but I gave them a little bit of time where they're not moving so that the player has a bit of time to just adjust to the surroundings a little bit more. Guard skin. This is basically um, this is basically the same thing as the uh, player skin. Parent equals no one when it's created, just so that it doesn't default to pairing it to something else. Um, the X and the Y uh, set to the parent X and Y. So it follows those and not just follows one single object. Guard controller. Uh, guard. This just initializes the grid. Um, initializes it to the size of the room divided by 16. So the reason it's doing this is because the grid size is 16 by 16. And if I just left it as it is, it would um, create a much larger grid that I don't actually need. And a lot of that would go off the screen. This isn't necessarily a problem because it's a, an enclosed area, but I wanted to avoid that as much as possible. Alright, I'll give you a quick run through of the game just so you can see what's currently in it. I'm going to have to wait for it to build and all that wonderful, wonderful stuff. Come on. Anyways, um, 
while I'm waiting for that, I guess I can mention future stuff I'm going to be working on today. Um, well, first big thing is obviously um, getting the... Oh, oh dear, I apparently have an error. Ah, okay. So, I've apparently, do I've apparently forgotten to take the draw event out. I don't know how I managed to completely forget that. Um, ah, I know where it is. I think it is because it is in here. Yeah, it is. This was a temporary measure to... Um, this is when the noise level was attached to the player and not to the um, separate object noise level. Oh yeah, game, oh yeah, game objects as well. Uh, noise level is zero, this is the sound source. Uh, alarm zero, this just sets it to be destroyed in the duration. And draw, um, this is a tempor temporary um, debugging. Or, well, just a temporary um, proxy thing, just so I can see how loud the noise is. Sector mark, nothing special. Um, object recordable, HP, toughness. Toughness is to buy. Um, toughness is a variable that determines um, how much longer it's going to take you to actually destroy the object. Wrecked and attacking. Wrecked is to stop you from destroying it when it's already destroyed, and attacking is to um, avoid uh, constantly looping a script over and over. So yeah, it calls back here in the alarm. And HP is minus 25 divided by the toughness. Uh, script create sound again. Calls back to the script. Um, HP less than if the HP is less than or equal to zero, then it wrecks the object. Step event. I did it. I did the um, controls for the step event in here because. Um, the problem is, if it's in an event of its own, then the alarm will um, uh, cancel out that event and just starts wrecking the object if um, if the cursor is over it. Draw, just draws the HP bar for it. There we go. That's all the objects. Hopefully, it should run this time. Um, so, future stuff that I'm going to be doing currently. Um, get the wreckable objects sorted, get the workplace area sorted because that is one of the other objectives. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of stuff off the top of my head and I can't quite think of anything just yet, but it's currently demonstrating everything working. So if I'm in range of them, they um, are going to notice and one car stopped there because they heard a noise coming from me and so that's why they were just investigating it and because I left the area they um, uh, they stopped and then went on to another area uh, yep you can see here that this is kind of buggy at the moment I'm trying to work out why it won't always um, it will only do it once and then not actually uh, continue the event I'm still trying to work this out at the moment but And yeah, the wrecking score is kind of broken at the moment. I'm going to try and resolve that. Hiding. Um, this one um, appears to have much effect at the moment. So, um, again, this is, as I said, this is all proxy. And a lot of this is still tweaks that I need to make. Um, so... Yes, a list of the few stuff they need to do. First of all, get this working so that it actually adds to the wrecking score. It says a global variable, but I don't quite know why it's not adding this being wrecked to the total at the moment. Um, add the stuff for them being suspicious when you've broken something and then starting to get the lost conditions in working order. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the office area um, set up, so if you're in the office and you're working, then it will um, remove their suspicion if they come along and see you. And yeah, I think most of it is just general bug tweaks at the moment. 
So, I'd like to thank you for watching, and hope that this all goes well.